time for them to get paid you to fraud them or they pay. And and I really love that verse because it's let it be known that when that person cries, his cry literally goes into the ear of the Lord of God's armies. You know, uh, I, I like it that Evangelist Kirk then told me a couple of times how to pronounce that uh, so both, but I'm just gonna say so both because that's what I'm comfortable with. But uh, Evangelist Kirk, when he come on, then he'll tell you the pro the correct pronunciation of that word. But and then in that fifth verse, he said, "You have lived in pleasure on the earth. Uh, you you you've been wanting. You have nourished your horses in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and does not resist you. And I I do praise God that." This is another example of the violence that done took the kingdom by force. You got people that's in the kingdom that's not doing right in there. They're actually harming others. And and I do praise God that, that God haven't had us to be fighting with one another because he let it be known that he does not resist you. You know, uh, we're, we're not finna fight back against you and uh and basically, every time I read this, I think about the nonviolent movement. You know, we're not supposed to be violent, people. We we don't fight fire with fire. You know, we 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 fight everything. And this is what Bishop Jones would say: we fight everything with love. Okay. So as we go into this verse seven, this verse seven and eight. Now, to me, I would say that he's almost changing uh, direction as to who he's talking to. In the first part, he was really talking about to the rich, the arrogant. But now he's he's saying, be patient, therefore, brother, until the coming of the Lord. So uh, we finna, and, and uh, because I see Bishop Jones coming in, uh, Bishop Jones was getting ready to get started on that seven. And because this, this had been your book, okay? We were waiting on you now that you're in. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna turn it back over to you because this was your, this was your your book that you wanted to do, and so we know we was in verse seven. So I'm turning over to you, Bishop Jones. Bless you. How you doing this morning? Doing good. What we had on verse that, uh, seven? Yeah, verse seven. Did you want me to? Well, no, I was just turning it back over to you. You know, that's what was getting ready to get started, verse seven. And so, you know, we was trying to do what we normally do. You know, you use your sign, you know, each one of the verse and let them comment upon it. So I was just letting you know we was getting ready to start that verse seven. And since I'm already on it, I start that, but then I'm turning it back over to you as being the monorail. You know, verse seven says, be patient therefore brothers until the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman or farmer waited for the precious fruit of the earth and is long patient for it until he received the early and latter rains. And every time that I've read this as a scripture, what comes to my spirit is how the Lord is is confident us who might not be in, being treated right. Uh, because God beholds all things. He beholds the good and the bad. Okay. And we we do know that the scripture says the vengeance is mine. I shall repay, said the Lord. So the Lord has never given it to us to to go out and have vengeance on those who have done you wrong or the ones that's not doing right. And so here again, I'm seeing how we're going back to the beginning of James, you know, how we're supposed to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation, because that's patience at work. And so here in this verse seven, he's saying, be patient therefore. In other words, let patience have its perfect work in you. You know what I mean? Uh, still be slow to speak. You know what I mean? Uh, still don't be, you know, wanting to respond in your wrath because your wrath do not work the righteousness of God. 
And we got to believe that God knows what he's doing. God's the husbandman. God's the farmer. We're, we're part of his crop. And so he's telling us that we should be patient because the farmer waited for the precious fruit of the earth. Because we do know that when you plant a seed and then you water a seed, you don't get increase overnight. You know, you got to wait. You, you go through days, you go through weeks of this plant sprouting up to, to the time of it producing fruit until the time of harvest. So this is really what I'm saying in verse 7, that he's just going back to what he told us in that first chapter, to let patience have his perfect work. Don't, 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 don't be vengeful. You know, don't start walking in wrath, but you still got to walk in love. So that's what I got on that verse 7. Anybody else care to uh, come in? Any of the other men of God care to come in on verse 7? Well, during this period, hold on, sorry, sorry about that. During this period, uh, Christian, the, the Christian Jews at that time was, Jewish Christians at that time were going through some distress. Uh, they were a little concerned at the the way the the world was going, the age and what they lived in, uh, how Listen, your volume is low. How everybody was coming up against them. Yeah. You know, uh we we have a a we have a a an order, an instruction from the Lord that tells us to wait. That 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 uh admonishes us to wait wait quietly while everything is deteriorating around you you know you you still have to wait and we're waiting patiently for the harvest to be reaped you know by the husbandman which is uh god the father amen so i i i'm looking at the same thing as as in a mirror is reflecting that our age and uh, the morality is going uh, going down the 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 world is actually coming up against christianity you know against believers you know we may some may be may not feel it as as heavily as others but if one feels it we all feel the effects and so since we're since we're having going through these effects as the age deteriorates mor morally, spiritually, you know, we find ourselves saying, okay, we're just out there, just a, a tiny voice. You know, it seems like we're going, we're beginning to, uh, uh, if I can use the word evaporate, you know, our influence uh, uh, that we once had in times past seem to be as though it, it isn't there anymore, you know? So, uh, but yet it is, but now we're quiet. And I used to ask the question, why aren't we saying anything? And, and, and the reason being is because he told us to wait, you know? Okay, you're going to say some things, you're going to witness, you're going to do those things, but it may not seem as though it's as effective as it was in times past. Because as the conditions deteriorate, as the as the world gets worse and worse, you know, it uh the saints seem to be quieter and quieter. You know, waiting. You know, waiting for the manifestation. And so uh that's the way I think I, I, I'm seeing the reflection. That's how I see it in this particular verses of scripture. I, I, I see as though the as they were scattered, they were quiet, they were apprehensive at some cases of, of ministering, you know, in certain areas because they knew they were going to be attacked, you know, because of what they who they believed in. And so I believe we're at that stage again. Uh we're we're become we're becoming scattered. We're becoming apprehensive of saying who we are, you know, we're quiet, you know, and we're just sitting back waiting for the manifestation. Amen. Amen. Bless God for you, Bishop, on this morning for that uh, explanation. 
Does anybody, any other of the men of God care to comment? Amen. We praise God, amen, for that verse. We want to include also verse 8, uh, kind of saying the same thing. Bishop, if you can uh, pull that verse in and, and, and let's connect them together. Okay. Uh, verse 8 says, be ye also patient. And he's speaking to us now uh, as the as the believers uh, and it's said to establish yourselves, your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And that's what I was saying, that quietness that we're experiencing that we're waiting and we're not as aggressive as we were before. And uh, at first I would thought that'd be negative, but it seemed to be a lot more positive because now. Uh, Darkness is looking at the light and they're wondering, why aren't they saying anything? Well, we're waiting <laughs> for the coming of the Lord. Uh, we've said everything we can say to you. You know, you've heard us from, from, from one platform to another platform to the next platform to the next platform. And we've been telling you, you know, but since you have rejected us, you know, so what we'll do is quietly wait until God tell us to say something and we'll say it. If we, he doesn't say, tell us to say anything, we don't. We just show you. We just wait. Amen. Amen. Do any other uh, of the men of God care to uh, make a comment on verse 8? Yeah, again, you know, uh, you know, as I said in verse 7, you know, I can kind of see how this is, he's telling us not to be violent, you know. Uh, we're not fighting violence with violence, we're fighting violence with peace. We're fighting it with the love. And although sometimes it seems as that the violence is winning, but I praise God that violence will never win over love. You know, it might appear to, but it's not really happening spiritually. Uh, because we're making our stands for righteousness, you know, uh, because again, you know, we, we know the Lord is coming. Okay. And we know as we stand on the word that every day, our salvation is closer than it was yesterday, you know? So I'm not going to do anything while I'm a pilgrim in this land that would cause me to be accosted or arrested to where I could not continue my journey as a pilgrim going to a country that's not made by man. So I'm seeing what God is telling us to hold our peace. You know, you know, don't I don't I don't need you to act in anger. I don't need you to let bitterness come out of your mouth. I don't need you to do any of that because I'm gonna fight your battle. Because he knows what we're going through. He know he knows what what evil done came upon us and he know what wickedness done came upon us. But I like it that he's, he's saying, be patient. He's, to me again, he's going all the way back to that first chapter. Let patience have his perfect work in you, you know, because all it's doing is giving you experience, which giving you hope. And you know that I've been through this before. I don't have to do nothing but give God praise and give him glory. He gonna fight the battle. So therefore my patience is in knowing that the Lord is with me and that the Lord is soon to return. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the men of God. Amen. You know, uh, when when I think of patience, I think uh, uh, a down on our hearts. You know, uh, sometimes that down can be set on anxiousness, uh, which as things get a little more difficult, uh, many of us might become anxious. We might want the Lord to hurry up and and come. We, you know, as the scripture says, the spirit of the church cries, come Lord Jesus. Uh, but uh, the, the patience is about us being able to, to continue uh, living for the God, for God, continue uh, working doing our work in the vineyard and at the same time amen know that christ is coming he's coming and it's 
it's drawing nigh. Would you all agree that that Christ returned is drawing nigh? Uh, and that it, it won't be that long, even though we have to go through some stuff. Amen. Whatever we got to go through, don't get too anxious. Don't get too anxious because it's going to be some things that's going to be offered to us in this season that we cannot take. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Uh, come on, Bishop. Oh, I we, thought you had something. No, I, I, I was just saying absolutely I agree because we, we do – we do need to uh, take into consideration that we don't waiting doesn't mean we're just sitting around waiting for for God to for for the Lord to draw nigh. But we're still working, you know. We're still ministering. We we not, we haven't just sat back and said, "Okay, I'm not saying anything anymore." I, I want to correct that. No, we're still doing that. But now the expectation now it it definitely. Uh, our, our our spirits, because of our connection and relationship with God, is saying, "I'm I'm close, I'm near." You know, uh, expect me at any time now. And so, uh, uh, I know that can be a little uh, frustrating. And like you said, we, we we want to we want to rush it, but you don't have to rush it. That's why he's saying, "Wait patiently. Just be patient. You know, just wait." You know, and uh, it's coming. I'm coming. But there are some things that I have to, that has to manifest before I do. And so I just need you to wait. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 9, verse 9, we want to uh, venture into verse 9. Uh, Elder, uh, can you pick up on verse 9? And uh, let's come in on verse 9. If we can get all the men of God on the line to come in on verse 9, why is this so important in this season? Are you there with us, Elder Fulbright? Uh, I had to unmute. It says, grudge not one against another brother at least you be condemned behold the judge stands before the door and i praise god that we all know that we're not the judge so when we talk about the judge we talk about him the one that's telling us to be patient the one that's telling us to hold our peace uh because see if we start grudging one against another see that's like being picky you know you know we can always find something to be complaining about one with another you know i can complain that i don't like you doing this and don't like this and i wish we would do this and all that uh see that grudging is really almost like mumbling you know you know one of the things that god hated was mumbling all the time you're whining and you, you you're complaining about everything you know you ain't grateful for nothing, you know what I'm saying? So when we do that, we condemn ourselves because we show that even we ourselves are not worthy. Because, uh, you know, one good example that the Lord dealt with me with is that when you do what I done told you to do and when you're doing what it is that you want to do, quit complaining about what you're doing for that person who don't do back, you know what I mean? uh you're not doing it for them you're doing it because it's supposed to be in you so if you're doing what's in you then you won't be grudging because you're doing what you want to do what i want to do is the, the lord's will but if i'm complaining about everything that i do or what how people are receiving it then again i can condemn myself in it because god is the judge you know he's standing at the door god sees everything you know He's, he's not blind to nothing that we do, but we got to do it out of a grateful heart. We got to do it out of a willing heart. We got to do it because that's what love would have us to do. He wouldn't be having us to be pickering, bickering with one another because it ain't nothing like being in a place of 
an assembly with people that's just complaining about everything. That's what I got on that. Amen. Bishop. Okay. Uh I'm I'm a I'm in agreement with uh Pastor Fulbright. Uh we do complain too much. Uh we we get into a a a mindset where we're we complain about everything. We complain about the church, we complain about people's behavior in the church. We murmur and complain about that and we get into quarrels, you know, and and fights because one person doesn't want to do what's right and then we 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 say we're preaching, but we're mostly complaining, you know, and 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 so we have to really be careful. We have to be able to make the determination and make the distinction, not determination, but distinction between whether we're ministering or whether we can just murmuring, you know. And, oh God, I'm so tired of these folks, these these saints, man, these these ain'ts and and all this kind of stuff. You know, we need to knock that off. We really we we do. We need to knock that kind of stuff off because that is a thing that uh, God, uh, James is cautioning us to stop that. You know, we should look at things from the, from, from, from this perspective that there are sheep and there are goats and we get that, but he let us all graze in the same grass. You know, he allows us all to graze right there. God does. Because I always believe that it stands a chance that that God, somebody can be transformed. Because we're all grazing in the same place, you know, we're, we're, we're eating from we're eating from the same pasture, you know. And so if we if we stop murmuring and, and talking against this and being impatient with people and impatient with the with the body of Christ and, and, and stop complaining. You know, I believe that a lot of folk would transform and conform to God a lot quicker than for us to get out there and say, you know what, you you, you just ain't right. You need to get right with God. You know, these folks, they, they make me sick. And that's the reason why I don't go to church. And, you know, that kind of stuff. We really need to stop that. You know, we really need to stop that. You know, amen. You know, just to still pick back off of that. Because. You know, that is a shame that we have seen. Well, let me see, put it way, that I have seen. I have seen more people who go to the different churches that want to come and, and complain about the church you're going to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, when I first started out this thing, again, y'all, I didn't know about denominations. I thought churches was church. You know what I mean? But then I started running. Once I, you know, got saved. I start having people say, oh, you ain't saved. You know why you ain't saved? Because you go to a church that believe in three ways of being baptized. That's wrong, you know? Oh, that's how you're going to come at me? And then the people who were speaking in tongues want to say, oh, if you ain't speaking in tongues, you ain't saved. What? How you complaining? How you doing that? Because when you're doing that, you're condemning yourself because why? You're not walking in love. And I say that to the point of the first First Corinthians 13, do I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love? It doesn't profit me. If I get my body to be burned, but yet I'm always complaining about everything that I do and about what everybody's doing, man, it don't profit nothing, okay? We got we to gotta see that this grudgingly is mumbling. We got to see that in Numbers, if y'all remember, I think it was Numbers 21, where they were mumbling so bad that God sent out serpents to bite them, okay? So we have to see that grudging, murmuring does not please God. It's better for you just to keep your mouth closed. Don't say nothing, okay? You can shake your head, you can wave your hand or whatever, but don't let this mumbling come out of your mouth because you're speaking at it to the atmosphere. Okay? It's like throwing seeds out. And, and you throwing out seeds of mumbling, then you know what's going to come up? Mumbling. Okay? And that's the chaos that we in. Because everybody's mumbling. Everybody's complaining. Nobody see no good. Nobody see no good. They don't see no good in nobody. Only in myself. And then in that, 
you condemn yourself because you not made yourself a judge. You are saying that I'm better, which is wicked. Amen. Amen. Over in uh, the book of Matthew in chapter 24, the, the Bible says that uh, because iniquity uh, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, but it says he that endures or he that continues to love until the end, the same shall be saved. Grudging, as you said, Elder, it interrupts love. It doesn't allow love to flow freely. We cannot afford for Christ to find us and our love is not flowing freely. Remember, the Bible says that the judge waited at the door. Amen. He's right at the door. And we can't afford it. We need to be careful how Christ finds us. And uh, for that reason, we need not to allow grudges and bitterness and all that stuff that hinders us. The Bible says, let us cast aside uh, every sin and the weight that so easily besets us so that we can run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So whatever you do, don't let nobody and don't let nothing interrupt your love. We, we have a, a charge from God, and that charge says that we should know any man nothing but to love them. Amen. So make sure that we keep loving God. Keep loving one another because the judge is at the door. And the Bible says the consequence of us allowing grudges to sit in it says that it is condemnation. That's what it says in verse 9. It says, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Uh, it, it repeats that same message over in Matthew uh, 24. Amen. If you get caught not loving, you won't make it in. Amen. Verse 10. Bishop, are we the only three online? No, Nehemiah's on here, Kirk's on here. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Good morning, Nehemiah, Pastor. Good morning, good morning, Bishop Jones. I, I, I apologize, I didn't know you was online. Uh, good morning, Evangelist Kirk. Do you all care to uh, make comment on verse nine? No, I believe you said, I believe you guys said it all, you know. Watch, watch our hearts in this season. Uh, some things is going to happen. If we're not careful, uh, we're going to get angry. We're going to get bitter. You know, it, it, uh, it, already a lot of us have fell off. We picked up our picket signs. And, verse 10, what you, you, you talked about is verse 10. Huh? What you what you said right now is verse ten. Yes, sir. So let's take verse ten, uh, Pastor Bill Meyer. Can you take verse ten? Yes, verse ten. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Hmm. So, uh. I see the prophets as being somebody who, you know, we have to see the work that they were doing. Uh, a lot of the prophets, they were speaking of this time that we're walking in, you know, this dispensation of grace that we actually get to see with our own eyes. They were foretelling what's going to happen. But all the suffering, all the the the, the violence, the evil, not being ex to be uh, to be a, to be able to experience. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, these things that we're taking for granted, you know, the, the gospel, the good news to see that Jesus Christ has come. You know, the prophets, they were out here just constantly uh, doing the work of the Lord of what they believed in and their faith. 
hearing from God, going out to, to speak about what's going to happen, but not able to see the results. We now live in a time to where we get to see the results. So if anything, we can look to these prophets and say, hey, you know what? We should feel honored and blessed to be in a time as this, that we can still continue to do the work because we have prophets who are out here who are doing work and we're not able to see Christ. They're not able to get to see the manifestation of Christ coming and forgiving people for their sins and then sending the comforter, the Holy Spirit to where everyone would know the word. That's why we don't have to judge one another. Why? Because God has written his laws on everyone's heart. Everyone is being judged according to his own ways, ways now. It's not just one person that has to come out and I'm responsible for all these group of people. God is making himself available to everyone. But we need to still be patient. We need to still be persevering. That's what, what, what uh, the James is talking about as in, in listening to the, the Lord, continuing his way and, you know, not judging our brothers, not judging our brothers to know like everyone is still under a dispensation of grace and mercy everyone is and not only that but we ourselves are also under that too because we're not perfect so we always have to look at this and we have our prophets who are uh they spoke in the name of the lord it says you know they came it wasn't like these prophets that just came up with with false prophecies every time they spoke they said thus says the lord they were hearing from god they were hearing from god saying what god is going to do so that's what I get from that, Bishop. Back to you. Does anybody else care to comment? Uh, any of the other men of God care to comment on verse 10? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I just want to add to what Nehemiah was saying because, see, you see again, we got to look at the James that took us back to that first chapter about being patient. Let the patience have his perfect work. And in this 10th verse where he says, take, now this is the King James verse, take, comma, my brothers, comma, the prophet, comma, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, comma, for an example of suffering, affliction, comma, and of patience, okay? To the point is this, and I like it that he's talking about the prophet. See, the prophet speaks for God to the people, okay? And there's a lot of things that God has said to a prophet that people had to wait on. Even a prophet had to wait on, you know? He had to wait for God to bring into manifestation of what he said, okay? But that prophet knew that God said that. So he can't take it back and say, well, I didn't mean to say this because it's, it's not coming fast enough for you, okay? Yes. I believe every prophet, when he speaks, would like to see that prophecy manifest immediately. But a prophet has to wait on God. He can't. He cannot rush the hand of God as to bringing forth the prophecy that he said. He himself has to exercise what? Patience as to waiting. But why he's doing that, he suffered affliction. He suffered affliction from who? These people who want to say, well, I thought you said the Lord said this. I thought you said this. I thought you had this. And again, what's that being? That's that grumbling. That's that mumbling all over again, okay? And and, and we got to realize that when we do that, then that verse uh, 9 still comes in there because at least you be condemned because you're doing what? You're complaining. You're mumbling. Instead of knowing that the Lord standing at the door, knowing that the time of the Lord is now, we should be so much busy getting our house in order to where we're not, I don't have time to be picking at Bishop Jones' house or Bishop Horn's house or Vangelis Kirk or Pastor Nehemiah. See, I don't have time to be in their business. I don't have time to be complaining about what they do. I need to get myself together. I need to be walking in the patience of knowing that God's going to do this in God's timing, in God's timing. So we, we should be learning from the prophet because he says, for he's an example of that suffering affliction because of what? What he said, okay? And even he has to be patient on what he said that the Lord has said. Amen. Any other men of God here to come in?
patience, the patience that uh, he was speaking of in the first chapter is just a little bit different from the patience that he's talking about in the fifth chapter. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because in this type of patience, he's talking about forbearance, going through suffering, you know, uh, uh, the longevity of being able to to deal with the 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 sufferings, you know, and uh, and in the in the in the in the farmer, I believe he was just saying that uh, uh, to to the extent of he said let patience have her perfect work in re in relationship to to us carrying out the assignment that we should be carrying out. And so I believe it's a little different in, in the patience that he was, he was expressing in the first chapter than he was in the fifth chapter, you know? And so, uh, because if we look those two words up, they're two different words with, with slight somewhat of the same meanings, but it changes based on the the context of the scripture so we we have to we have to be able to differentiate between the two patients that that, that within the greek and so uh yeah this one here has to do with okay i'm waiting for something for for uh, but i'm going through something so i have to go through like he explained about the prophets the prophets had to suffer some things uh, we can look at Elijah and what the things he went through, you know, and 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 uh, and the various other prophets that uh, of that gives us great example of the hardness and the sufferings and that they had to go through. They had to go through uh, uh, famine and they had to go through not having something to eat and having some having a bird to bring them something to eat where they couldn't go where they normally could go had to hide in places and 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 wait until god delivers them and 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 you know set their feet and establish them until you know in other words i have to wait for me myself to be rescued from what i'm going through you know and uh and 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 the uh, the the farmer i'm working you know, and uh, doing the doing the work, you know, this guy here, I've done the work. Now I'm waiting for God to do something here. And so uh, I believe it's two. They differentiate a bit, you know, between the two. Yeah, and I just want to add one more thing. Uh, I agree with what's been said already. And I also like how it's telling us to be example to uh, to be like people from God when God go and tell us to to give us a word. If we want to say what a prophet did, God would give a word to the prophet and then a prophet would have to go to these people that don't have a relationship with God. So he see these people who are doing things that are, you know, not right. And yet it's not the prophet's job to judge those people. His job is just to say what uh thus says the lord you know that's what we always read in the old testament thus says the lord he doesn't go and just give his own opinion he doesn't complain about them that they're not living like how he's living as a prophet and honoring god he's just strictly telling them thus says the lord he's not telling them hey you're going to go to hell da -da 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 -da. no he doesn't do that to people unless god is telling them to and what does god always do when he goes to the prophet he gives them a word that he can give to these people to give them an opportunity and a chance to repent. So when we see our brothers and things into a fault or something like that, we shouldn't be complaining about them. Going back into that verse above, we shouldn't be complaining or judging them, but we can definitely be praying for them because we already know what that says the Lord. And we have the Holy Spirit. And we know that we should be reaching out to them in love. God is calling out for them. And God is using us to spread the gospel, the good, the good news of the gospel, each and every one of us. So we have an example of how not to judge if we just look at the prophets. Yeah. And then again, I like that, because then again, after you've done all the things that you've done that he, he instructed us to do, now we got to deal with the repercussion that goes comes along with it. 
And a lot of saints don't want to go through any repercussion. They feel like mm. I can give the word and I'm giving the word in joy. And they get to shouting and, you know, praising God and doing all of that kind of stuff. But the prophets went through hell after they did what God told them to do. You know, they went through hell. Look at Jezebel came after Elijah, you know, uh, the, the king came after Jeremiah, you know, all of these. You know, come on. You know, they went through hell. And so they had to be very patient through the suffering that they had to go through. But we 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 just want to preach a word and la 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 get our offering and run and talk about oh yeah god use me hey did you see how many folk came to jesus oh glory to god through my ministry but then when the suffering comes brother can't take it <laughs> you know even jeremiah in that 20th chapter talking to god he, he told god you deceived me <laughs> It's just going to be with me. You told me not to look at their faces or nothing like that. But look at what all I've been going through because of me coming out here telling them what you told me to say. So you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. Else. But then he let it be known that he had a burning on the inside because he was refusing to speak for God. And the only way he could get that burning off of him is he had to speak that word that was causing him to suffer affliction, being put in stocks and bonds, you know, being ridiculed, being talked about. Here comes bad news, Jeremiah. What bad news you got today, Jeremiah? You know, so so true. Yes, when we look at the prophets, see what the prophets had to go through, then that's an example that living for God is the same as, you know, because you're actually manifesting what God would have someone to do. And there's a lot of people that don't want to see you doing good when they're doing bad, okay? Because you shot you you shine a light on them, okay? That what they're doing is not of God, okay? So that's why a lot of you uh, Christians, children, God, that's why y'all not invited to a lot of these parties that people have, okay? Because you're gonna be sitting there, you're not gonna be able to partake. And if you've been invited, they say, well, why are you, why are you not protecting Bishop John? You know, you, you, man, y'all got this lick over here. Y'all got these kids off in here. You know, I can't protect this. I got, I got to go. But I do praise God that, yes, when we look at the prophets, you know, even, you know, and I was thinking about Ezekiel, you know, when God had told Ezekiel to make these cakes, and he told him to cook them, <laughs> he was a dove. Elijah, I mean, Ezekiel, Lord, oh no. And so the Lord, instead of letting him use human dung, he let him use the dung from from the, the animal. So we see a lot of the prophets that have been through a whole lot, but they had to wait on God, you know. I'm quite sure even Gideon would understand it when God called him first of a man of God, you know. Uh, and then what he had to go through, you know, going in with a small army instead of going in with the whole army. So it's yeah, it's a lot that prophet has went through, you know. Who is this session for you, next gender? Should be the same way what we see in the churches to what Bishop Horn was saying. Uh, we got a lot of preachers that don't want to say certain stuff because they don't want to upset the people. They don't want to upset the people. And, and so many are, are weary that if I do this, I do this, then the people ain't going to like me and they're going to vote me out. Or better still, if this is my church, and they're going to leave my church and go join some other church. Hmm. Now, I see that as light affliction. That's just light affliction. But when when we preach, it should affect the world in such a way that the world themselves will come against us. Uh, have you ever considered going to a party, as you said, Elder, and all the people decide 
you know what? Let's burn Elder Fulbright with our cigarettes because he he's preaching his gospel and he stands for the word of God. So we're going to we're going to make him suffer. We're going to burn him with our cigarettes. We're going to pour gasoline on him and set him on fire because he stands for God. Now, that's suffering, brothers. You know, this light affliction of, of folk going talking about you at the church. That's light. You know that that but uh or uh, 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 making your name bad that's light but if you get somebody that really hates you for what for who you stand for you're gonna go through something and then you have to wait for god to deliver you have to look here you sitting at a brook and and you got fresh water coming through and all of a sudden it dries up hey wait a minute I thought I was supposed to be the man of God. I thought everything's supposed to be available to me. And it dries up. You know, that's suffering. That's going through something, for something. And a gospel that you're not willing to give your life for is you not is no good for you to preach it. Don't preach it. Forget it. Give it up. You know. Because if you're not willing to die, you know, you're not willing to suffer for it, then it's no good for you to preach it. I'm sorry, Bishop. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it, it was good that we went there. I want to take, bring something else and put it on the table for us to chew on because the prophets were an example of, of, of suffering and affliction, but also an example of being faithful to God continuing to do what they were doing while adversity was coming up on them. Uh, but I'm over in Luke chapter 21, and I'm in verse 16, and the Bible says, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends, and some of you shall uh, they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not uh, and hair on your head perish. In your patience, possess ye your soul. In your patience, possess ye your soul. It kind of seems in the book of James as if God is preparing us for this season right here. Uh, and, you know, so, some of us are just the honest God truth. Some of us are going to sell out, going to sell out. You know, I've, I've been telling people for over a year uh, to be careful of your circle because the Bible says that brothers shall betray brother. So we got to be careful who's in our circle. But at the same time, as Bishop said, we got to keep doing what God has sent us to do. We got to keep watering the earth with the word of God because we don't know who God is going to save through us. And we have to do it even when the persecution comes. And I know we think, oh, like Bishop, say, none of us, we really, uh, when, when we quote that scripture, Bishop, the, uh, the Bible say we want to know him in the power of the resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering, we get stuck right at the power of the resurrection. We never go into the fellowship of his suffering because we don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through nothing, but we want that power. We want to lay hands on the sick. We want them to recover. We want to be able to you know, uh, prophesy. We want all of the power, but we don't want to suffer. Amen. But when we set our dials of our heart on the right thing, which is that patience. In patience, we possess our soul. What does that mean? I, 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 I'm, I'm not getting anxious. I'm not being moved from what God told me to do. I'm still doing it. And at the same time, the conflict is coming because of that. The conflict is coming, Elder Fulbright. The conflict is coming. Bishop, the conflict is coming, Evangelist Kurt. The conflict is coming, Pastor Nehemiah. It's coming. Amen. But in 
the midst of the conflict, we still have to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Well, you know, as you, as you say that, you know, one thing that you know, I praise God for is that a prophet is someone who sins. The Lord done told him to say. Uh, if a prophet didn't believe that it was God, he, he's not going forth with it. He's not saying anything. But when he knows that God is real, and when he knows what God has said, then he must do what the Lord says, because then he's in danger of hell's fire himself, because he knows that this is not my word. You know, this is what God has said. And 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 I do praise God that it's a lot of times when God is given, you know, and I'm talking about me, it's given me a message to speak to the people that I have seen in some of those that, well, Lord, you know, I already know who's going to be upset about this, you know what I'm saying? And really, I didn't really want to say it, but it was like Ananias with Saul. And Ananias had to let God know that, wait a minute, you telling me to go to him? Do you not know who he is? Okay. And God had to comfort Ananias' heart by letting him know, yeah, I know who he is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you in on something. He's going to suffer many things in me. Now go do what I told you to do. Okay. And the reason why a prophet go forth is because he believed God and he know God. And so, therefore, for him to rebel it's, it's like witchcraft, okay? So even with us, and, and, and I don't want to just limit it to preachers, to us just being saints, living in this world, there's things that, that God would tell us to tell somebody. And Lord have mercy, it's like, Lord, I don't feel like getting no conflict with these people, but you got to tell what God done said. Why? Because we got to also see that sometimes that prophet is like a watchman. God is finishing that sword. And you seeing it coming and you ain't going to warn the people? Uh, you know? So I, I, I do praise God for really what we really talk about. And, and, and you know, Bishop Jones uh, Horn said something that made me kind of look back and, you know, had to do a little study and research myself. And, Yes, there is a difference in the first two patients. Yes, yes, there is. Because this patient's got more to do with what's coming upon you. Okay? What's coming upon you. Not just what you're going through, but what's going to come up on you because of who you are and because of what you stand for. So you you got to have that type of patience that endures the affliction. You know, you've got to know that God is not going to let you die, okay? But sometimes, you know, <laughs> and, you know, Mr. Jones, you're always talking about Revelation at 6th chapter. There's some people who crying for death to come upon them, but death don't come. I bet you, and I believe there's a lot of people who have spoke for God in the affliction that they're going through. They thought it'd be better that I just die because a dead man don't have no pain, he ain't got no sorrow. Aware. You know, thinking about Paul, you know, when they stoned him, threw him over the cliff and left him for dead. Even because of what Stephen was doing, they were stoning him, man. Woo! So that patience of knowing that God got you. Got you. You got to have it. Hey, Amen. We're coming up on the time for us to end our uh sex session on today amen i thank god for each one of you men of god and for your expounding amen i'm gonna ask uh evangelist kirk to just read verse 12 we're not gonna i mean excuse me 11 we're not gonna expound on it but we're gonna read it and meditate on it and then immediately after evangelist kirk reads verse 11 we're going to be in the hands of Bishop Horn, our radio bishop. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Benjamin Kirk. I have a mic available. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're we're now in the hands of Bishop Woolly Horn. Amen. And he's going to go ahead and bring us to the end of our session for today. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you that has joined us here at AM Coffee Talk this morning. We're just glad that the word of God has gone forth and we're learning patience in the midst of suffering. Praise God. And patience throughout suffering is not the easiest thing in the world. I guarantee you that. Amen. But with Christ and with having, having Christ in us to strengthen us, praise God, we're able to endure. Praise God. So let's endure it. Let's go through it. Uh, you know, uh, I like I think a lot of times we come to church. And we feel that as we receive Christ, that everything's going to be hunky dory, goody goody, you know. And 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 yes, you will get receive the blessings from the Lord. Yes, you will be healed. Yes, you will uh, uh, the things that God promised that He would do it. But He, as as Bishop Jones was talking about, the fellowship of His suffering, His suffering. Now. Because anybody, and they, my brothers here, they have longer beards than I, you know, uh, can you suffer because of what you stood for, for somebody to pluck your beard out, you know, and you could do nothing about it, just pluck your hairs out, and that, that hurt, that's not something that's, you know, you could just, somebody pluck your beard out with their hand or with some, with some pliers and just yank. And, and just pull, pull it out or someone beat you unmerciful because of what you stand for the suffering you know and can you endure it without retaliation can you endure it based on the fact that you have you stand on the word of god if he suffered i suffer if he since he went through i go through since he walked this walk and people rejecting him, I will accept the rejection also. Wow. That's something. Amen. Kind of makes some of you say, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't join this to take up on all of that. Well, yeah, we did. You know, it's going to come a time that we're not going to be, and a lot of us right now are not being accepted. Because we love Jesus. There's going to be a time that it's going to get worse. But I want to let you know, I want to encourage you that that's why he said we're waiting for him, for the let the Lord would return. Amen. That's what we're waiting on. We're going to go through this suffering and affliction, but with patience. Why? Because in the end, in the end, we're going to receive our just reward. Now, are you ready to receive that just reward? To be with Jesus? To receive your crown of life? Eternal life? If not, here's your opportunity to, to accept him so that you may spend eternity with him. Okay? Uh, we're going to pray a prayer of faith right here and right now. And will you, uh, I'm going to pray for you that you would accept him in your life, that you would walk this walk, that you would spend eternity with him in joy. Okay? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We thank you for the word of God that has come forth from these men of God, from those lips of clay. We're praying in the mighty name of Jesus that this word has reached someone. And said, you know what? I want to make a change in my life. I want to be that soldier that suffers for Christ's sake. Knowing that in the end, I receive the blessed hope. Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to touch them. Guide them, lead them. On this pathway. Protect them and keep them. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening in with us today. We're almost done with the fifth chapter, amen, of James. And I've been enjoying myself listening to the men of God. And I'm going to walk in patience. How about you? May God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you on tomorrow. Bye-bye now.
Ventura. I told you, Ventura 